Pinot Black with more here for today, folks. And make sure you watch all the videos. And that was basically you need to pay attention to all the word that usually there's black smoke and the sun is humongous and the idea that that major crater that's up there that's blowing out uh, you can actually even see from this shot the idea that this may be a planet or one of the super giants behind the sun as you can see it pretty darn clearly here is this the, this big flare hits a solid object because it's just like a blowtorch I mean anybody that's uh, Settling torch or you know, I mean people know of putting a flame against a hard object. I mean this is out this humongous object You can realize the Sun how big that is and then so uh, I think I can pop forward and get the same shot Okay, and then I think I should be able to pull up Which day that this shot was pulled from it's just recently I think it might even be this still this and this idea that when this flame hits this humongous object there in space so everything uh this was pulled off behind core, and then you got the Super Giant's main sequence, which the sun is about right somewhere in this alley, in the Super Giant's main sequence. And the idea that when we get these big distances that we're away from these objects, like Rigel Cantaris B, which we pretty much know, it's up high or low. Uh, basically, you depend on the low. I would figure it's low on Earth. Uh, and the idea that it's a long ways away from us, and that's why it looks so small, and that's what we see. At uh, my next video will be down there from Antarctica, and let's check out Fireball right now. So to make this stick in your head that the idea that this is one of the suns from the supergiants and other objects around the supergiants and in space. So we go to the the close objects in space that are coming by the Earth, and the idea that we do know that okay, that sees. Uh, I might be able to have time, and or we'll get it in the next video of the idea of what. Uh, we were at the tail end of the most knowledgeable uh, asteroid storms of the season, of the fall solstice. We got a lot of objects here. I don't have time to go to each one of them and see the distance and stuff. That's not really a key important thing here. The key important thing is to start paying attention to this. That's what uh, a lot of people in like my video showed you where the guy had the satellite shot and ended up seeing this bright object. Okay. Well, it does come up in the sky at, we've got at Chickamauga. And it's on my past videos also. comes up in Chickamauga. And I'm going to show you yesterday's stuff too real fast on a spread. And then th th there it is. Coming across the night sky in Chickamauga. Tell us. Huntsville. Tell us. So the idea that when this object gets closer to Earth... You gotta pay attention to the directions of Chickamauga. Now, the idea that I, I don't think that this is ever this is just the idea that it's one of the it's probably more than likely Rigel Cantaris B, in which I have one person and no scientist coming in and basically saying, Yeah, more than likely it is. One's really pissed off, and maybe he's talking backwards to make sure that we do pretty much know that that is it. And as you can see, you'll see the radiation that it does from whatever gets in front of it, and we know that what gets in front of it down at uh, Antarctica. And you can see the terahydrons, tetrahydrons, whatever, basically, I and other scientists want to name them before discovering them. And the idea that NASA and everything needs to come forward on the stuff that they know, because the idea that we have collabor co uh, co well, you know the word. Look it up in the dictionary. <laughs> Corroborating evidence, I guess. If I was a pig, I'd know how to say it. Or maybe they don't really do it. The lawyers do it and the judges do it for them, hanging everybody. So anyway, the idea that it's all adding up. I do data and the idea of the pictures and stuff, and it just all starts adding up. This idea that's what it's got to be. Okay. Antarctica, and then the idea that you have all the objects up by the sun. I'm going to go to solar arts. First off, we'll stay on here and get this all hammered home that the idea that this is this object, which is basically a sun in the supergiants, which more than likely is Rigel Cantaris B. It's a hell of a long ways away. It gets hidden by the tower down in Antarctica. But the idea that this how it a sun basically starts to shine on Earth. Okay? Because this is all it coming across the sky. So let me go ahead and get to uh, the other of yesterday. Which is an, uh, basically, I put it up and we'll just keep on cruising, cruising down here so that you guys keep on checking these out because you'll be able to freeze the video and see that, yep, this is all the cameras, all the night skies are catching this. It's going to keep coming up because more than likely it might end up someday replacing the sun. 
the next time back around, or who knows? That's why we got to hope the sun gets through the Super Giants, okay, or whatever. So there you go. There's and it just keeps on going through the clock, and it keeps on rising and getting bigger. And one of these, I'm not sure if it's this one here or the other one, will show you the idea that this thing is very bright, very hot. So I'm all for weather modification, anything to keep us cool. So the idea that all this proves to be it, and if you watch the clocks and the times, then what the heck, sometimes it actually flares real big. So it has a real bright side when the, some of the objects that are, get in front of it, i.e. we've seen this before. Terry, it's basically holograms, and then you get you see that one matching up with it. So it's the idea that is it part of it? The dog sure seemed to think so. So anyway, we have all this great footage, and the idea that that bright object is not going to go away fast because it's going to be around for a while, and unless it's part of an asteroid belt, okay? Because it's all the same thing, and it's going through the sky, and it's hot like a like a welding rod talk to my welding friends and I'm the world's worst welder and thank God because I'm an electrician you're not supposed to weld shit together you're supposed to have everything insulated so this stuff is really bleeding out truth it's our object down there we know we've seen it we've got Hawaii footage we've got footage from all over the world catching this thing this is night sky all these folk all these photos folks these are all caught in the night sky okay the UTC times, those are the times there, but the idea that you minus that six hours for East Coast time, seven for Central, and let's go to yesterday. So here's yesterday's. So, and it's there, and it's going to keep on being there all the time. This is night sky, folks. This is an eyeball. All these are eyeballs up into the sky at night. I think I can pop up to 150. And these are all objects in the sky at night. And it's out there, and now maybe we can hurry up since I got this hammered home to the idea that pretty much is the same doggone thing, same time, because that 3 UTC ends up coming up in the night sky down in Tullahoma. And basically, this is not really coming viewable that much in, but I'm sure I am really interested to see why we haven't or if we're not seeing it, because the idea that if we get this view from Tullahoma, Hello, let's see some of the Arizona footage. Probably pretty awesome, but then again, maybe they just had sky coverage where they couldn't see it, okay? Even burning through the night clouds, folks. Check that out, okay? Nope, it's not the moon, okay? All righty, so let's check out. Okay, so I'll give you, we'll just go through the graphs real fast because everybody can always freeze this or they're interested at. And I know it's really fast, but the idea that you get the idea we have had humongous world earthquakes. Okay, now I'm not sure if these graphs got stuck at the seven point, whatever the heck they had over. In, uh, and it really kind of makes me wonder the idea how big the footprint really was. But I guess we've got to trust some of the data. At least we know they take the volume down on the CPM and the RADs in the United States. So the idea, remember, go back to my videos in the last dozen or so, and you'll see a nice video on CPM and RADs in the United States, folks. So it all ties together. It's mother, it's nature all over the world. So, all right, so the graphs are going crazy. Let's go to Live Globe. Got stuck with the screen size we got this time for this video, so I'm not going to mess around with it or hurry up and pop the video in. Okay, so that's the big seven point whatever they say. They always take a little bit off. We'll get the earth going the right direction here. Got a 2.6 down in the United States. The U.S. On side has been busy on the ring of fire today. Uh, Colorado, Montana, and Wyoming. Uh, I had someone mention at a website that they thought they seen something about Wyoming and then it was off. So I don't know if Wyoming had one or not. So 7.1, they say, more than likely there's something cut off it. So it probably was could 7.3, 7.5, who knows. USGS usually chops something off. Hell, it could have been an 8 point something. Sure, Dad, a big-ass footprint. And as you can see, the side of the earth that does not get a lot of tetrahydrin and supergiants and the massive, the majority of the sun exposure, supergiants and so forth in space and these objects that are coming by. So... We'll go to uh, RSOE, which I like to trust for the idea of the close, because they look at NASA and put everything in, the, what the close objects are coming by. So here we go, looking at the sun recently. 
any idea that there's a nice and more than likely out of that same nozzle that we end up seeing or at least one of them two or three of them and yes I know about solar flares and the idea of this and that and everything like that but there are certain ones that put out this type of a flare there which basically almost seems like a what it would be on earth of being like a volcano or something like that and I understand the sun is like a, it's a big old you go to helio server and you'll get good ideas of what the sun really looks like up close burning and when you blacken some stuff out sometimes it'll look like a big old ant's nest or a worm's nest but it's all fire up there now the V on this comet coming in that basically they're calling possibly this could be Lovejoy. I'm not positive if it's Lovejoy that they caught there and it's going to take a while to get to the sun or what. Or it's another one of three because look at these smaller ones here and check V action out folks. So tons of stuff going through and the idea that go to, I always throw it out there to Dutch. So the idea that if you go back and check Dutch's for the last three months or so, we had a comet that came in and we all pretty much knew and we blew NASA's in the ass and in their balls and kicked them in the butt real hard to the idea that, yeah, grays, grays, all this. And because I've been yapping and yapping, everybody's like, okay, we kind of know from people that have been looking at the sun for years and everything like that, that, and then you end up, we'll find his video too of, and then my last video shows a lot of archive footage of comets hitting it. And yeah, there's lots of that don't make it because there is some kind of a force field, electronic or so, or just the heat and the sun that pretty much knocks a lot of small ones down, like those tiny ones in that V. And then there's your axis on the pole, pole shift. Uh, I think if we go up through here for RADS and CPM too. Now this is where you're interested in earthquakes being weakness, where the terra hydrants and stuff would pop through and give it a good quake. Maybe if you got a volcano near there, you want to get the hell out of there. So the idea that in the future anyway for at least so we'll go up here and I think yeah there we are still off on the pole the north is alright but the north is kind of leaning back there too so the earth's always moving we're going through space at more than 60,000 miles an hour all the time uh, it'd be interesting to find out how many revolutions and how much faster we're possibly spinning now uh, if anybody can throw me a heads out on that I'd be interested on in that and here let's go to the jet stream so the idea that when you're thinking about rad cpm and so forth and so on it's the idea that there's your jet stream map keep an eye on that so if you're in this you don't want to be out there taking a bath in the snow or the rain uh not for a while research the history of uh uh, re uh research accidents basically the idea that we were testing all them bombs and didn't realize how much radiation that we were actually getting or the government's never going to say it to you anyway and the idea that your jet stream every day is another whether it's a nice day to be outside or not a lot anyway let's put it it's pretty much safe for anybody that's an adult because the idea that you're a lizard you can handle it young youth keep them in when you got a lot of this and a lot of this action here okay and jet schemes strain around and thanks god for weather modification and anything with it or weather modificators are doing for us to keep us like that as much as we can to clear that crap out so anyway Let's go to see what else we can put in. Another shot up by the sun, and we have some kind of phenomenon of that shield that possibly is burning off or something like that, because this is part of that dark light. Okay, this was zoomed in at, like, I believe 400%, I guess, I got on this shot. And if you think you get any more, you might not see it. But you can see that halo effect, and we get that black, dark lights down at Earth. This is behind the sun, folks, so then the idea that anything else is in front. And, yes, here's our comet again up there coming in to the sun okay everybody needs to calm down look at the footage on my last video and you'll realize the idea that it ain't going to do much we were just going to get cme flares and i mean we might not even get them here on earth they might go off into space somewhere totally else they have in the past some of the big ones so cme comet's going to hit the sun more than likely our grays or get blown up going into the sun so we're going to get to keep an eye on this coming through so so here we go good example of the 23 to 24 hours of daylight that they get down there in Antarctica. Antarctica, folks, this is not the North Pole, okay? And there's our object coming up again. Sure wish they'd quit moving that radar dome around. <laughs> we know it's not no damn radar dome. We've already proved that. Watch all my old videos. Don't let anybody blow and smoke up your anus or your uranus all right so i think we'll have enough time in here now i'm gonna you'll see the tetrahydrons come in ahead of time boom boom either that or it makes clouds from the heat here it comes 
Truncated to get that. More. 